Dear uh, colleagues, dear family members, dear um, friends and other interested people, I want to bring attention to a very important topic in uh, the system of support, the family who's connected to our patients, the family who may be in a critical situation itself and a family who could become a very important resource to support survival and recovery for potentially several family members. So I worked a quite a while as a family therapist in psychiatry, especially working with psychotic patients, but also with people with substance use disorder. And I think that addressing families as a system addressing the different individuals in their relationships is one of the most effective ways to support them to deal with critical situations and, and challenges. So families are a system. They are probably the most important system in our societies, defining relationships and helping young people to grow into um, adulthood to learn from mistakes and strengths of their uh, parents and being able to better cope with uh, the different challenges in their young lives. The tensions between different members in the family are always critical for uh, all of them. And how they are able to manage that is critical also for the survival in our in today's situation. So I want to focus on that and start with family in, in crisis and crisis in a complicated situation. We are living in a dangerous environment nowadays with uh, 2,511 people who died due to an opioid overdose, which is currently the most important uh, reason for mortality in British Columbia. And um, uh, the reason for that is that the street opiate is becoming more potent and more, uh, more dangerous. So it's, they are uh, a deadly threat, especially for adolescents and young adults. Especially also because adolescence uh, is a time of a dynamic development, which is coming with instability, with new challenges, with new orientation. And the exploratory form of substance use, trying everything in terms of their effects, is something which is part of adolescence. So we need to figure out how that could be supported and how can the most vulnerable in our society in instability and um, important phases of development protect it. The objectives of my presentation today are to talk a little bit about the family situation in North America and the challenges, the impact families have on uh, development, and how could families become more of a resource, especially related with the threat I already mentioned, supporting families in crisis. So this um, uh, picture should demonstrate how significant the increase of risk is with synthetic opiates like fentanyl. Uh, if uh, anybody is starting to use fentanyl with, with no opiate experience before, the risk is 100 times higher than uh, before with the, in the times where heroin was dominating the street drug use. Higher means also a higher risk of not surviving uh, the use of uh, drugs. Exponential effects beyond imagination because most people don't have a real idea how dangerous these drugs are. And uh, adolescents are 
mainly opioid naive, not protected through substitution treatment, and mostly also taking little precautions because they don't know and don't see. They try and they're not um, aware enough of what could happen, which is um, in any case can easily lead to disastrous consequences. I want to share one um, case story here from uh, um, a young 16 year old who describes his circumstances in life and, and, and using, which is extremely helpful to see and understand because it's describing also the scope of things we need to be aware of. Can we talk about um, people in your life in terms of basically it sounds like all of your friends use fentanyl? Um, what about um, uh, your parents? Yes, uh, my mother, she uses more than I do at the moment, uh, but she wants to quit it herself or at least be a closeted user again. But um, what was it? Uh, my father, he's not really in the picture at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really sure who he's been, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You, where is your mom? She lives in the same building as I do. In the SRO? Yeah. I usually just go up there when I feel like using. Do you, do you use Blitter? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What is, is, is your relationship with your mom in some ways based on using? Uh, in some ways, yes. But uh, there's also the fact that she I don't know, she says that she started using down to help get me off of it, but I'm fairly certain she was just using it the whole time and then became an unpositive user, um, mm. you know, to get me not homeless. Yeah. Mm. How does it make you feel when she says that? Um, I do, uh, it's, she does kind of, you know, guilt trip me from time to time, mm. and she can be kind of codependent as well. Mm. Sounds tough, huh? It's uh, it's kind of hard to like, uh, for example, just like leave the room and she'll be like, "What are you doing?" And stuff like that. Yeah. Um. So the other question is, do you have anybody in your life that you can depend on who doesn't use? Uh, I have a few family, but they don't really talk to me so much. So no. Uh, not too much. Uh, I don't really date as well, but it's good. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So the question immediately is, what would you think is needed to stabilize such a situation, to help the mother as well as the son? And uh, what do we have in terms of really acute care interventions um, supported housing and counseling immediately to uh, make sure that this young man is um, stabilized and, and, and supported. Our system is pretty much unprepared. If uh, you, for instance, uh, look at the analysis from Alinsky et al. in 21 uh, from the US, only 10% of the overdose survivors among adolescents were able to access, um, like say medication assisted treatment or psychotherapy. Very, very uh, few. Majority of the, these uh, patients are just sent home after surviving an overdose knowing that the risk for a next crisis is immediately given. And so are the, the parents are also not aware of that and are not supported at all and in high needs, as we heard from this young man. Uh, so what are we offering families in such a desperate crisis? So... Families in general are in, 
our time uh, very often in a critical situation, especially if social instabilities are also part of that. So I just want to point out that 40% of today's marriages in Canada alone are ending up in a divorce. And also a lot of uh, the uh, fathers um, are not part of the family system. So patients uh, are very often not just the the kids, the children, also very often parents are in extreme high need and using uh, high-risk substances themselves are overwhelmed with their own trauma and mental challenges and have no social stability like living in a single room occupancy room. This is a picture from an SRO in Vancouver. So overwhelmed with then the task to help uh, kids to grow up, to go to school and to finance all of that are adding to the mix. Kids, based on that consequences, very often are marginalized themselves, not able to follow the demands in school and are marginalized and traumatized themselves. So what does that mean for their development? It means for sure that, that despite this very often disastrous situation, childhood and in childhood and adolescence, parents uh, and siblings are still the center of their universe. If that is not functioning, um, uh, it becomes very complicated to address all the big challenges in the development during uh, in, in school and in learning in general, but also just surviving. I just want to share one um, study I did in uh, Germany, and um, I compared a group from uh, heroin um, dependent uh, people using intravenously and uh, so represented a sample in, in Germany in the early 90s. And already then, uh, that it was obvious that um, some significant life events occurred far more often um, among the or for the later on heroin addict, like separation or divorce of the parents, um, the, the um, death of father or, or mother, own severe illness, and the wish. Uh, not to live any longer. Um, by the way, 58% is very close to the real documented uh, suicide attempts among heroin users in Germany at that time, which was 64% reported a suicide attempt. So it is a complex situation with extremely uh, big challenges. And actually you can based on their experiences and their life events in early adolescence or childhood, um, how the risk of high-risk substance use is evolving. It's leading from early trauma, which two-thirds of um, drug users are reporting, to um, more or less ongoing traumatic experiences, heavy early consumption, and uh, all kinds of mental health challenges, um, which then at some point leading to an interaction with the healthcare system, emergency rooms, or or the police, without an engagement in a functioning, ongoing system of care. Yeah, um, they can trigger an individual crisis, and as I said, they can predict the likelihood of later on high-risk uh, substance use, self-harming behavior, or even suicide. So how can family in these circumstances become a resource? Okay, still uh, to uh, really uh, refer back, the family members are the key figures still. Also, if there are negative experiences, they stay of cri critical importance 
uh, across generations. And the kids are learning um, attachment and everything uh, in, 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 in their families. Parents are in any case negative or positive role model. And to learn and to change, it takes very often the support of family members. Okay, so also a lot of uh, these um, uh, kids I'm talking about are leaving their uh, family of origin, but it's still an important um, figure. They try to stay in touch, and there is our they the families are very often uh, supporting uh, so social and other resources and can be part of the solution, but that needs specific supports from outside and very often from professionals uh, helping the families to um, um, meet, to stay in touch and to work uh, on the, their problems. And the family as a resource um, stays a critical relationship even for the young man, in, 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 in the example, the mother is still probably the most important person in his life. And the social support of this environment in single room occupancy room is not a place for them to stabilize and to overcome the currently highly dangerous and instable situation. So how to mobilize grandparents and other siblings how to fix uh, a desperate situation and doing it in synergy and not as part of a destructive fight. So what could be done? Um, hiding the traumatic experiences is, 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 is not the way to go. It needs to be addressed because a lot of the symptoms caused so trauma, the, the related anxiety, depression and other symptoms are actually making some kind of self-medication very often the way to go. Supporting protective space and offering trauma treatment is essential. And we don't have the capacity right now to provide that also in places outside of uh, uh, the, the big metropolitan areas. The situation is not much better than the situation, for instance, in the US, as I mentioned in the beginning. So there are several things we could do, and uh, I'm pretty sure that they are effective. And let me go through the different uh, topics. So what is targeted prevention? If you know that somebody already experienced an overdose and survived that, the question is how to develop a system of response which is providing uh, the opportunity to survive, to um, 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 systematically increase opiate tolerance at least for a while, for instance, through uh, depot oat treatment and to make sure that they not consuming without knowing what they're consuming, being able to deal with their risk and uh, manage the risk with different uh, means like the risk assessment and management platform for overdose prevention. And then it is so important that parents and children, everybody involved is uh, aware of uh, the factors, aware of, of uh, the reasons to be careful with fentanyl and, the, uh, and not making it a taboo. Most parents in BC, most teachers in British Colombia or in Canada don't know sufficiently about what's happening on the streets, what's happening um, after school, and are, are not talking to their uh, students sufficiently about things they could do and how to deal with these high risk constellation I already mentioned. So, and then if it's not working, it is so important that decisive help is available and that everybody knows what to do because the time between a, a deadly dose and dying of an overdose is 
not very long. How could the family be supported? The family could be supported by direct treatment sessions. For that, we need to build capacity and training. All members of a family meeting and talking about the situation and um, also creating in this environment the necessary resources to stabilize and uh, to avoid relapse. The family therapist is meeting with the parents and the kids and everybody involved. So uh, uh, develop it, extending the network for a defined period of time uh, to work together on solutions. And the topics could be uh, to get a better understanding about the needs, to discuss ideas how to support each other and to better manage conflicts in different perspectives. So translation, crisis management and dialogue for a longer period of time and uh, with the help of professionally trained translator. So all in all that can contribute and should contribute to a common effort to keep the children and the parents alive to understand the risk and better manage the risk together. The take home message is there. Families are functional like a system, as I mentioned in, in the beginning, they can become a burden, but they can also become an important resource to survive and to recover. To face growing challenges with education, income, jobs, growing levels of, uh, of um, divorce, need very often professional counseling and support in order to avoid significant losses and uh, overdose fatalities. We need a range of tools to help all of them and the functioning system in the lives of everybody are a much better guarantee than just um, um, everybody moving on and ignoring each other. The cornerstones for our system for family empowerment being to uh, support parents in general, even without their children, to talk um, together about experiences and strategies. Also creating a system of online resources for the families to structure their lives. And if they have substance use problems themselves to get the proper support. Specific tools um, for crisis management and effective interventions, including family therapy, are highly needed. We cannot resolve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Let's think broader and let's create as much synergy between professional help and family empowerment to support our children and keep them alive. Thank you very much for your interest.